With Halloween right around the corner, and everyone I know of getting into the spirit, get it? It's like a ghost. I figured I would indulge myself a little bit and make a list of the top 10 games that I've played recently to get myself a little bit more into the Halloween mood. Now, not all these games are new, but they are spooky and fun in one way or another. So without further a boo. These are the top 10 games to get spooked for Halloween 2015. Number 10, Fingerbones. Now, I only just discovered this game a couple of days before writing this list. In fact, it had a big influence on me making this list to begin with. It's 100% free and available through Steam. It's a horror narrative mashup game that you can beat in probably around a half an hour. It's a creepy and minimalist game that's almost like, uh playable campfire story or an extremely dark episode of the Twilight Zone. The entire story is told through the scribblings of a madman, and it deals with a really taboo subject matter that's definitely not for everybody. There's a serious content warning with this game, and I urge you to read the description before actually deciding to play. But if you do decide to play, you'll be treated to a truly unnerving, if quick, horror experience. Number 9. Don't Starve. Have you ever wondered what it'd be like if Tim Burton had created Minecraft? That's a bit of an odd thought, but luckily you're not the only person to have thought that. Don't Starve is exactly that game. It's way farther on the survival end of survival horror, but by no means does that mean it isn't creepy. Nightfall brings horrible monsters out to try and devour you, almost everything in the game is hostile, and when you add in the looming threat of starvation, it makes for a tense and frantic fight for survival. Definitely give it a try if you haven't already. Number 8, Rule of Rose. This game, most people seem to forget, ever existed. It wasn't until Cry's playthrough of it a couple of years ago that I think most people had even heard of it. Its horror is built entirely upon the foundation of the uncanny. It's a lot like Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Everything in the game is just a little bit off. Nothing as it should be, almost as if we're seeing everything through the eyes of a really twisted child. The monsters in the setting are a combination of whimsical and terrifying. That's something that horror games don't do often enough, and trust me, it works to great effect in this one. Number 7. Spooky's House of Jump Scares. This one's a fairly recent addition to the Steam storefront, and deceptively cute. Spooky starts off very much like a haunted house ride at a fairground. Cute cardboard cutouts jumping out at you in an array of different sound effects. Then it takes a turn for the horrific, delving into scary new areas of Spooky's malodorous manner. The gameplay, soundtrack, and room design all change to suit the various horrors that pursue you relentlessly throughout the house. I especially love how every enemy in the game pays homage to some other type of horror experience. Silent Hill, The Grudge, Creepypasta Creatures, SCP Monsters, they all have surrogates in the house at some point or another. It's a surprisingly deep little game that really does embody the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover. Number 6, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. This one definitely isn't going to be for everyone. Vanishing falls into more of the category of walking simulator than true survival horror, but again, that doesn't mean that it's not scary. This game is one of the better examples of how the genre of walking simulator should be done. Just because you want to focus exclusively on your narrative doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice all of your gameplay to do it. You play as a psychic detective, walking through an abandoned town, solving grisly murders. There's some type of eldritch horror that's entering the minds of the townspeople. What's going on? Only you can uncover it. It's a beautiful and haunting game and it'll have you digging deeper and deeper to try and discover the truth behind what happened on this remote island with this once happy family. Number 5. Lone Survivor. Do you like Silent Hill? Do you like Silent Hill's soundtrack? What about old school point and click side scrolling adventure games? Why haven't you played this game yet? Like Don't Starve, Lone Survivor actually puts a very heavy emphasis on the survival part of survival horror, forcing you to make some really difficult choices that affect the gameplay in numerous ways. 
Should you sleep through the night instead of scavenging for supplies, meaning you might go hungry for another day? Or do you take those caffeine pills? The side effects are minimal, or so they say. There's audiovisual hallucinations, there's other survivors, and monsters. Maybe. All things said, this game is a more faithful follow-up to the Silent Hill series than anything in its more recent release library, and it's totally worth looking into. Number 4. Bloodborne. First off, let me just say, Bloodborne is horror. I would almost rate it as the scariest game on this list. It hits every note that a great horror game needs to hit. Scary monsters. Check. Creepy environment. Check. Tense situations around every corner. Check. Haunting and subtle soundtrack. Check. Major sense of disempowerment. Check, check, and check. Bloodborne is more nerve-wracking to play than any of those slender knockoff jump scare fests that seem to come out every other day lately. And it's not even trying to be. Ah, you found yourself a hunter. Number three. Fatal Frame 2. This is my absolute favorite survival horror game of all time. Fatal Frame is the pinnacle of Japanese horror. It takes elements from things like old ghost stories to films like The Grudge and The Ring. It builds tension and unease with its environment and story masterfully. It does stumble a bit in the combat department, but as a whole, Fatal Frame is fantastic. And if you haven't tried them yet, you absolutely should. The first three games are available for download on the PlayStation Store, 10 bucks a pop, and the new one, Maiden of the Blackwater, is coming to the Wii U as a download on October 22nd. I'm so freaking stoked. Number 2. Soma. I'll keep this one brief since I did just make a video of it when it came out. Soma is the sci-fi spiritual successor to Amnesia. It's an existential horror game that relies more on you scaring yourself with the questions it has you asking, as opposed to the scary monsters jumping out and going BOO! Although I assure you, the monsters in this game are plenty scary on their own. This game gets under your skin and sticks there like a ringworm. It opens so many doors and shows that there's so many more ways to scare the player than just loud noises and deformed monsters. Number 1. SCP Containment Breach. Okay, now this one's an oldie but a goodie. It's a horror game that I've talked about at length, and frequently. I've noticed lately though, as I stream more and more and talk with my viewers, that there's still a lot of people who don't even know that it's out. It's a great free horror game, and it's based off of the SCP Wiki. It's a collection of short stories and vignettes written by some really creative people. Now I've spent hours on the Wiki alone and I've barely scratched the surface of the damn thing. So let's get onto the game. The game functions like one of your typical post-amnesia survival horror games. No weaponry, you get labyrinth-like, rogue-like levels, scary as hell monsters that are constantly nipping at your heels. But the way that SCP differentiates itself from its survival horror kin is in the unique approach to the gameplay. Everything you can do in the game is built around interacting with, or in most cases running away from, the titular SCPs. Now I'm not going to go into detail on the mechanics, because a lot of the fun comes from playing the game yourself and trying your damnedest to survive against the seemingly insurmountable obstacles that are stacking up in front of you. Don't forget, like I said, it's roguelike, so you're not going to have the same experience the next time you load it up after dying. And it's got multiple endings. I can't spoil those because I haven't seen any of them. This game scares the absolute crap out of me. So if anything I've said about it is intriguing you in the slightest, go try it out. It's free. What have you got to lose? Besides your dignity, that is. This game will make you scream. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining me on this one. Kind of a deviation from my usual setup. Uh, not a review or anything like that, just a top 10. Feel free to uh, like and comment. You can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try to do updates more frequently. I just put out a video the other week on Soma, like I mentioned in the video, and you can check it out at this link here. Uh, and let me know in the comments of any games that you guys might play that uh, I might have forgot to put on this list. These are just the things that either I just found out about and really liked or have had 
in my repertoire or, or, or in my library for years, like Fatal Frame. I play that game every year, honestly. Um, but yeah, comment and let me know what your guys' favorite survival horror games are. Or if you have an idea for a list or something like that, shout it at me. Let me know pros and cons, all kinds of different stuff. I'm open to suggestions. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I will see you guys around next time.